Okay, due to fastener. Okay, due to fastener. So if due to fastener, what is given to us will be Q. Right, the formula. So Q is equal to uh, fastener resistance force. And then we're going to divide by spacing. Okay. And if you look at our cross section over here, right? If you look at our cross section, this is what? Under double shear configuration. We have Q will be equal to 600 divided by the spacing of 6. And then we are going to multiply by 2 over here. This 2 is due to double shear. Because you have a single bolt, and the bolt can either fail on the left hand side, where I'm drawing now, or on the what? On the right hand side. So with this, we know that this is equal to 600, right? 600 uh, times 2 divided by 6. So it's equal to 200 Newton per, no, not Newton, pounds per inch. And with this, we know that Q, we can relate it Q, is equal to what? VQ over I. Right? We can relate this to VQ over I. Right? Okay. So, so what from here, what we are going to do is we are going to determine what is our V. Okay? Now, this is mode one of failure. Okay, later on then we do the detailed calculation. The next mode, Mode two. Okay, so mode two. Let me get the get this cross section. So mode two of failure. Okay, mode two failure is due to the uh, shear stress due to the maximum shear stress located at the geometric centroid. Okay, so our geometric centroid, I'm just, just going to sketch this out. So this is the position of our geometric centroid. Okay, and why I highlight the geometric centroid, why the geometric centroid? I'm so confident that Q makes work. Why geometric centroid will have or were why geometric centroid or why how max or oh, okay sorry why tau max were occur at the geometric centroid And this is because at the geometric centroid, okay, Q max and T min will occur. Right, the first moment of area 
at the geometric centroid argoid point C will be at its maximum and the thickness will be at its minimum. So we are very sure that mode 2 failure will occur at the what? At the uh, at the uh, geometric centroid. And then the last one. So this one, the formula we're going to apply is just tau max is equal to by over izz okay. and then we multiply by q max divided by t mean okay and then the last lastly we have mode three failure due to bending moment or due to uh, normal stress induced by the bending moment. So for this case, we want to find tau max is equal to mz over izz multiplied by y. And if you look at this formula, right, we also know that mz and izz are what? Constant. Okay. Right. The only thing that changed is what? Y. So for this case, y max will occur at the distance furthest away from the centroid. Okay. So again, three different failure modes, three different formulas, and you have to understand the concept really, really well. I think uh, failure mode number two and three, you guys are fine. It's failure mode number one. Okay, so let's do failure mode number one first. Okay, so now if we were to now look into this, okay, this is our view. Okay, at the end of the day, we have to determine P. At the end of the day, we have to determine P. Okay, so the first thing we will do is we uh, we have to determine, we have to relate okay, P to V max. Okay, so we are going to construct our, our free body diagram. Okay, so this is our free body diagram. Right, so this is we have support, we have a y, and we have a support here. We have our b y, and then we have our our others uh our load over here, which is p. Right, so from here we know that a y is equal to b y due to symmetrical uh, loading and geometry okay, about the y-axis. So I'll sketch the transformation again. This is our y. Oh, no, not this way. I do apologize. This is our y. This is our x. This is rotational z. So about this axis, right, which is our y, y axis. Okay. So from here, we know that we do static analysis. And by doing static analysis, we do 
some measure of forces in the y direction is equal to zero. We have a y plus by b y minus by p is equal to zero. So we know that a y is equal to b y. So two a y is equal to p. So a y is equal to p over two. So the next thing that we do is we are going to sketch the uh, shear force diagram. So with the shear force diagram, uh, I, will, I will do the, the length like what you see on top. So this is our V, this is our X, over here this is our P over 2, and then down here is our minus P over 2. Over here is our L over 2, the entire length, and this is L. So it goes up here, comes down, comes over here, and go back up. So at this magnitude, this is our P over 2. So we found that our V max is equal to P over 2. Okay, so that's how we relate. So now we look at our cross section. Okay, so let's deal with our mode 1 failure. which is due to fastener. Right, so we are going to look into the cross section. Give me five more minutes, I'm almost done for today, okay. So right, so we know that Q, we have to use Q is equal to VQ or by over izz qz okay so what is known okay we know that v or q is equal to what we calculated q earlier q we calculated to be equal to earlier we calculated to be equal to 200 okay so we know that q is equal to 200 Next, VY is equal to P over 2, right? IZZ, okay, let me put in units. IZZ, okay, I'm not going to find IZZ, I'm just going to use the values that I know is equal to, if I can find it, 2902. Now the confusing is this, what is QZ, right? So the fastener, when we look at failure, failure will occur at here and at here. And what did the rule say? The member have to distribute the entire, what? or the shear flow has to distribute across the entire member. So the first moment of area to consider is this entire section over here. Not above the fastener or below the fastener. The whole member, it has to distribute across the whole member first. Okay, so now from here, the good news is we know our QZ. Okay, so QZ is go width, depth, by bar. Okay, so the width is equal to what? Uh, six inches. Just for the wood, okay, just for this member, member number one, okay. And then the depth is four, is two plus two, four. The Y bar, so halfway, this is five plus two, or four divided by two is equal to seven. So this will be equal to uh, six. Five plus two, 
times six times four is equal to one six eight. Okay. Inches to power three. Okay, so now we just got to apply the formula. Q is equal to 200 is equal to P over two divide by 2902. Then after that, we have to multiply by 168. So therefore, P will be equal to 200 multiplied 2902. 68 times 2 is equal to 6909. Okay, is equal to six nine zero nine point five uh, pound force. Okay, so if the force gone go beyond six thousand nine hundred and nine point five pounds, okay, the fastener will break. Okay, so this is the first force. So I'm going to stop now. Okay, I'm going to continue again uh, on Thursday regarding the failure at the wood okay, due to normal stress and chewing stress. I will stay behind if you have any questions to ask. Okay, I'll stop the recording. Thank you.